Hey, I'm Michael Janda. I'm here with Elise, and we're going to talk about how to stand out as a junior designer. Yeah, I I always tell junior designers, don't think like junior designers. <laughs> and why what, what I mean by that is a lot of times when you're you're new and if this is totally normal is you like I, you want to stay quiet, you maybe don't want to like take the initiative too much, maybe you don't feel like you're the smartest person in the room. But I found that the junior designers that have really stood out to me like when I've taught classes, people who are learning design, the people that have really stood out to me that I've hired are those that ask really great questions, ask a lot of questions, take initiative, see actually where they can solve problems for me, even outside of workspace. Like, you know, how can they help me in the classroom or yeah. help me any at any point? They're problem solvers. And when I see people take that initiative, I get really excited to hire those types of people because it means that I'm not just going to be like, it doesn't mean that I'm just going to be giving them a lot of work and like a lot of help and a lot of my time. It means that there's, it's a lot more transactional. Like they're actually giving a lot to me as well and providing a lot of value. And the more value you provide to, to a potential employer, the more hireable you are going to be and the more you're going to stand out. And as far as like people ask me, how do I stand out on my portfolio? I always say that like, I want to know a little bit about who you are. Like, yes, like the work is great and, and that's very important. But I also want to know like, what makes you uniquely different? What are you interested in? You know, like I like to, you know, drink this certain type of beer and I love Indian buffet and I like to play volleyball on weekends. Um, like that's what makes you, that's what makes you interesting and someone that I maybe want to actually work with and, and be around on a day to day basis. So that could be through like imagery you have in your about me section. That could be like sh showing some of your social media posts and something like that. Just have a glimpse into your personality. And then uh, the other thing is like for case studies, a lot of times when I read a case study, a UX case study, it's just artifact after artifact after artifact and a lot of content. And I'm only going to look at a case study for one or two minutes. So you really have to be a good storyteller. And so when you show an artifact, let's say a persona or a competitive analysis, give me the main takeaway from that and how that main takeaway and that main takeaway really needs to um, be showcased in the end result. So just t t walk me through that um, that process and that story in a really concise and clear way. So just a couple sentences for each artifact mm -hmm. and then show me the end result and how all of that had um, impacted that end result. That's kind of what I'm looking for. Yeah, it's good. I. Uh, I'll tell you the story of the greatest junior designer that I ever hired. He was like my third or fourth employee. And um, I hired him because his wife called my company. I had just started hiring. I posted a job and his wife called me and said, hey, my husband is roofing houses. And but he kind of knows some Photoshop stuff. He worked at this scrapbooking company. And I had such big needs at the time that I was like, Great. Have him send me his resume because I honestly, <laughs> ha I had every need. I needed people for everything because my business was growing and I was hiring and trying to manage it. And because um, it was so early on, it was that transition from freelancer to agency phase. Mm. Anyway, so I hired him and he was the first person when our office manager would pull up with a trunk full of soda for the fridge He's the first person to jump out of his seat and carry the stuff in. He mm. was the one who managed our backup drives for 10 years. He would take them home on the weekends. And uh, so we had offsite backups. This is before the Dropbox era. So we had offsite backups of the work and it would back up the server. And he handled all that. I never even worried about it because I knew that he always had it. He would do anything that needed, I mean, if we were painting a wall, he would be the first one to be willing to paint. If we were hanging a picture, he'd be the first one to be over there helping with that. And he, and he became invaluable just on these yeah. kind of intangible things, this, these helpful attitude things, he became invaluable. Now, the benefit to him is that he also was super ambitious and productive in design and was just a sponge of knowledge, asking the right questions, like you said, um, where he grew in his design and production abilities by leaps and bounds over the decade that we worked together at my agency. 
but you mm -hmm. can look out. So how to stand out as a junior designer in this uh, conversation, that's the topic here. Look outside of just design and look for ways to solve other problems at the business that are beyond the, just the design things because perhaps your design capability and uh, experience isn't up at that super mega level yet. You need to become invaluable in other ways to the business that you're working at. Yeah, totally.